Hello everyone. In this video I'm going to demonstrate absolute and relative references in Microsoft Excel. Now I've got a data set here with uh, pertaining to electric guitars. So I have, uh, let's just look at the top left for right now. I've got uh, this first column A, electric guitar, it's got a header, and then I've got some different models of electric guitars there. And each electric guitar has a price there's the price and then uh, maybe you know we're a distributor and we're distributing this many units of the guitar so the Epiphone we're distributing nine units at a unit price of three hundred and ninety nine dollars and we have all these other units of these guitars as well we're gonna we're gonna calculate uh, the total right price times quantity and we're gonna calculate sales tax and we're gonna use this tax rate and then we're gonna calculate the ultimate total of everything now down here, below that, I have actually the same data set, but arranged differently, arranged where each, uh, it's actually the transposition of the previous data set. So it's instead of uh, the guitars listed as a column, the guitars are listed as rows. And I'll, I'll get to that in a second why I'm doing that, but it's to demonstrate the concept of uh, relative reference. All right, but let's go to this top data set. Now suppose I wanted to calculate the line total of, of each guitar. So I wanted to calculate the price times the quantity. So I would click in this box here and I would say uh, equals uh, and then I would click on B2 and then I would times the quantity C2 and hit enter. And uh, that gives me or $3,591. Now I could right click on that and go to format cells and choose currency. I want to choose uh, dollars at two decimal places. So there we go. So we've got, there's, that's uh, more easily read, right? We've got the comma, we've got the dollar sign, we've got dot uh, zero zero. All right, now, and I click in that cell E2 and you'll see the formula equals B2 times C2. So that's, that's nice, that's correct. And of course, what I can do is I can just drag that down very nicely, right? And it calculates the line total of each guitar. So if I click on E2, you will see the formula has changed to B3 times C3. That is this one times this one. And if I click on, let's say, uh, E8, right? That has changed to B8 times C8. So Microsoft is very smart. As you drag it down, it changes the cell references and it drags the cell references down kind of behind the scenes. So it knows that, oh, you want E2 to be B2 times C2, then you probably want E3 to be B3 times C3, and so on, right? And that's called a relative cell reference. What we're saying is that the, the reference here in this cell is uh, three columns to the left, times two columns to the left. So that's that's relative to where you're at. And that's what's the case in every row. Like if I go down to this 14,000 line item, that still is three columns to the left times two columns to the left, right? It's relative to where we're at. That's great, that's very useful, that's very handy. Imagine doing that in a programming language, you would need some sort of loop to loop over every row, and Microsoft Excel does it, you know, very quickly uh, with, with, you know, very little, uh, very little computation on our part. That's great, but what happens if you don't want it to do that? And that's, that's what I want to explain here. Let's say we're going to calculate the sales tax. What I would do is say equals, I will take the unit price times the quantity Right? And then I'm going to say times the tax rate, which is 7.75% over here. So I'm going to click on H1, right? I'll hit enter, and you'll see the tax on, on all nine guitars at $399 is uh, 278.38. Now, if I drag that down to calculate the sales tax of every guitar or every um, you know, line item, you'll see that I get a bunch of zeros, which clearly is incorrect. Let's see what's happen happening there. Now, if I go to D2, which was the original calculation, that, that one is fine because I hand entered it, right? B2 times C2 times H1. But let's look at when I go down a row to D3, 
it changed the formula from B3 times C3, which is right, but times H2. So it moved down the sales tax to the next column, you see? And that's what I don't want it to do. I want B3 and C3 to be relative references. I want those to change as I go down the rows. But I don't want H2 to change as I go down the rows. I want it to stay at H1. All right. That means that H1 needs to be an absolute reference instead of a relative reference. By default, Excel thinks that you want to do relative references. So what I needed to do is I needed to keep the 1 the same. right? Because as I go down the rows, it's changing the rows of the tax rate. H4, H5, H6, H7. It's changing the row number. right? because I drag down, so it's it's thinking you want to go down here, and of course in this cell is zero, or you know, it's nothing. In this cell is nothing, and so that's how we're getting zero there. So I'm going to go up to my original formula, and I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of the one. The dollar sign you can think of static, like the dollar sign looks like an S, and uh, S, uh, you know, static begins with S. So you can think of that as static. And um, once you do that, then the, that's telling Microsoft Excel not to change the one as you drag. So now let me try it again. I'm going to click here and drag. And you'll see the tax now is correct. I will, I will start at D2, which is the cell in which I entered the formula. And then I'll just go down to D3, and you'll see B3 and C3 changed accordingly from B2 and C2, but H1 stayed the same, right? That's what we want. We, we, we made that one static. And I keep going down, and you'll see H1, and everything looks good there. And now, now that I have my sales tax, I might want to revise my line total. I'll come back over here to E2, and what I really want here then is uh, B2 times C2, and then I'm going to add to it the sales tax, like that. All right. Now, think about it. Do I want this to be all relative references, or some relative and some absolute? Well, in every line, I want three columns to the left times two columns to the left plus the column to the left. So I want everything to be relative in this case. So I'm just going to drag that down. And now we have the total line items with uh, sales tax like this. Now if I want the total the cost then, I'll say equals sum down here, sum, and then I will sum all of these numbers and that gives me 62,000 roughly dollars there, everything, including sales tax. Now I want to come back up here because this video is on the absolute versus relative reference. I put a dollar sign in front of that one. I could have also put a dollar sign in front of the H and what that says is to make the um, the H static as well. And so uh, I didn't have a problem here though because I dragged down and so Microsoft Excel when you drag down it stays uh, it's, it thinks that you want to stay in that column. So it's not going to change the H on you anyway. But just for kind of safety or insurance reasons, I might want to put a dollar sign in front of the H just to be sure that it's not going to change the column on me as I drag down as well. So this is going to do the same thing, right? Putting the dollar sign in front of the H because the H didn't change anyway. So I'll just show that here by dragging. And you see that all the numbers stayed the same even though I have a dollar sign in front of the H now. So now we're saying the H is static and the 1 is static, so this cell will never change, H, H1, right? So I can put a dollar sign in front of the H, I can put a dollar sign in front of the 1, or I can put a dollar sign in front of both, right? Now, to demonstrate that even further, I want to go down here in this data set, which is the same data set, just transposed. So the ro rows became the columns and the columns became the rows. Uh, you would normally not do that, you'd have one data set, but you can imagine a data set that would be set up this way. And so for uh, demonstration purposes, I just, I just have the same data set transposed. Okay, so again, now each guitar is a, uh, the guitars are a row, 
right, instead of a column. The prices are row instead of a column the quantity and so forth. So I'm going to do the same thing but I want to show you how the relative and the absolute references change or the relative references change here. So uh, I'm just going to put sales tax sales tax there. Alright so if I want to calculate the sales tax for this item here B23 I'm going to say equals and I'm going to say this guy B21 times this guy here B22 and then times and I'm not going to put any dollar signs just yet H1 because we're going to observe what happens okay so I have the correct number there right $278.30 that's what I got here right that was again B21 times B22 times H1 the sales tax now watch what happens when I drag this to the right to calculate the sales tax on every line item. I get zeros again. But the reason I get zeros in this case is different from my experiment uh, in the previous data set. Let's check it out. Let, I'll click on this cell. You'll see I, I, got, I have th uh, C21 times C22, which is what I want, right? C21 times C22, but then times I1. I1 is this cell here. Okay, let's let's look at the uh, the next guitar. This one is D21 times D22, which is what I want, but then times J1, which is here. So you see now, as I'm dragging this way across the columns, Microsoft Excel thinks that I want to change the tax rate across the columns. So now it's the column that's changing and not the row. Of course, that's not what I want. So I want to make the column a static, uh, a, 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 an absolute reference here. So I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of the column, H. Hit enter. All right, now let me try this again right, by dragging across the columns. And you see now that H has remained static. H1, 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 even though the other the relative references are changing you see as I go across the columns so that's the use of the dollar sign I wanted to put it in front of the H this time instead of the one or you know I wanted to put it in front of the column this time instead of the row as last time and of course I could put it in front of both here I could put it in front of the H and the one and so let me just show you that drag across and nothing will change here of course all right, now uh, again, I'll just finish the example. So now once I have the sales tax, I can calculate the total line item. I can take the guitar price per unit times the quantity. The quantity, wait, the quantity should not be dollars. Let me just change that real quick. I'll right click and I'll go to format cells and we'll just say number, number to uh, zero decimal places. Okay. All right, so let me calculate the line total. That will be uh, the guitar price per unit times the number of units plus the sales tax. All of those I want to be relative references because I want all three of those numbers to change as I go across the columns. All right, so I have the correct number there, $3,869.30. That's what I got here. And now I'm going to click on this button here and just drag and then the relative references change then D, E, F, G. Notice the, f the formula in the formula bar as I go across H, I, J, and K. Great. And now if I want the total, I just say equals sum. And I'll just sweep across all of these guitar prices there, the line items. Bam. I've got the same price, $62,044.22 like I had up here. So everything works good. Thank you.